we're going to do the Halbeck array system to a rectangular shape. So you, as you can see here in the image, uh, we have the same idea as the Halbeck array systems as I have shown in the first video of the series, in which, and as a result, we want to get the augmented uh, magnetic field on the upper part of this geometry and uh, the cancelling out of the magnetic field in the bottom part of it. And we are going to extrapolate this 2D view to a 3D view. Okay, so now that we have the idea of what we're going to do, we can follow up with the creation of that geometry. First of all, let's, show, let's choose the 2D design. Very good. It's loading. Very good. Loaded. Good. So now, um, let's go to the to the plane here and then we can choose a rectangular shape let's say at 10 uh, and here at zero it would start at 10 and we'll have a shape of a square that's good great it's not showing here because we are in the, in the very zone in um, region so let's just zoom out a little bit and here we can see the square as well all we want to do here is to take the same square and replicate it uh, in the same axis X. We can do that by mirror duplicate here. This is a very useful tool. We did it once and now we're going to do very well. It's working. Good. Great. So now we have five different separate geometries of the same shape. And what we want to do now is to assign a direction, a relative direction system to each one of them. First of all, we got to create the relative direction system first. So to do that, uh, I'm going to create a relative coordinate system and follow up the arrows as we see in the image. Good. So for the first one, we want access in the global direction. It's already in the global direction, so I'll leave it there. So the second one, we want uh, the axis to be facing upwards. Good. Now we need it to be to the other way, other side. Now we need to, do it to go bottom side. And now we want it to go to the global direction as well, in which we don't need because we already have the global direction. Very good. So now in the coordinate systems, we do have them all here. So we have the first one facing up, the second one facing left, the third one facing down. Very good. And now we're going to apply them to the respective geometry. So by clicking here, we can either click here or in the tree. I'm clicking here to make it easier to understand. So I go to orientation. This one is already global. The global the X, uh, axis is already going that direction. That's what we want. Very good. The second one, we needed to put it in the CS1, which, no, my bad, CS2. No, it's CS1, which is facing up. You can see right here, CS1 is facing up. Nice. So now you want the third one to be facing left. Should be CS2. Very good. Uh, you cannot see here, but it, it is facing left. And the third one facing down. CS3. And the other one facing global as well. Very good. So now all we have is that we have for each one of these, they have their own uh, coordinate system. And that's going to implicate in the direction of the flow of the magnetic field when we simulate the the, the field around so very, that's very good i want to do a zone of influence around them as well so what's what i'm going to do is create uh create a region let's say it should be like 50 that's good this is a nice region then we can extrapolate these oh first of all we we give like the magnets their magnet magnetic material which would be the new time alloy uh good that's good and then the region is vacant that's perfect 
then we can extrapolate these to a 3D view. I'll put the same uh, parameters as I put it in the X and Y direction in order to give it a squared. So this is 10. Very good. So now we have quite a good five uh, neotime magnetic magnets here. That's nice. And the region around there. What I want now is to simulate what we have here. Let's see if everything is OK. Set up. Like set up default and check everything is OK. So now I want to analyze it and see the results and see if it follows up the idea of an argumented uh, field where the fields are supposed to be argumented and the cancel field when they are supposed to be canceled. Very nice. So a good thing to keep it in mind is that we were seeing 2D like this. The Y direction facing up and the X direction facing left. And this is what we expected. And this is what we had in the 2D view. So if you see the image right here, this is what we expect. We expect the argumented field to be on the upper part here where I am showing and the canceled field to be on the bottom part of it. Very good. The simulation is done. Let's follow up with uh, seeing, uh, creating here some selecting the, the geometries, all the geometries they are selected, and I'm going to simulate the, the field. I'm going to simulate the field uh, with a string line first on the edges to see if they follow the idea of the string line in the picture. And the meshing is running. Uh, it's going to take a little bit to calculate because it's a 3D image. Very good. Uh, I realized that my region of interest is too close to the to the to the system here. That's not good because that's not allowing us to see the whole uh, the whole um, scope of the of the the lines. So I'm going to change that. So going back to the to the 2D view. First of all, I'm going to delete it. Okay, I'm going to change this this region here. It is too small. Oh, right there. Oh, but, um. Okay, so here we are in the 3D view. What we have here, uh, it's good to tell that we were seeing the 2D view. These, from this perspective here, the plane X, Y, and now we have the 3D view right here. So I'm going to keep it like this so we have a better view of what's going on. And before that, I need I need to show that the the area here in the upper part and the down part of the x and y is quite low. It's quite close to the to the object. And as if you want to see the argumented field here, it might be cancelled out by the area of the calculation. Uh, so I'm going to increase the area a little bit in order to uh, better calculate it. So to do that. I'm going to extend it in the y direction a little bit. So let's say like 200 here. That shall do the work. Very good. So now that we have a better extended area, let's follow with the with the simulation itself. Create a setup. Very good. Leave it default. Check if everything's okay. Everything's okay. Let's analyze. It's gonna take a little bit to run because it is a 3D simulation going on right now, and for that it takes a little bit longer. Very good. Simulation is done. So now we can uh, see what we have. Let's, check. Let's select all of these geometries, click in field overlays, go to the magnetic field and choose the vectors. By choosing the vectors, we choose all objects. And I want to plot this string line. The string line is going to give us the same image as shown in the picture before. It's going to calculate a little bit. There, there are a lot of string lines here. Very good. So as you can see here, the image is a bit laggy because uh, it's taking a lot of the effort. My, my computer is being quite uh, used right now. But as you can see, you have quite an argumented field on the upper part of it. And I'm going to put the image right here so you can see the this 
resemblance of both of them. You can see a minor difference between them. It can be a numerical error since you're not uh, doing the mesh uh, in the most refined way, but we have it here the way it is supposed to be. And this is very good. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. See you next time.